We are at the Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base Willow Grove to test some of the connected automated vehicles that we've been working on over the past year and a half in the Federal Highway Administration. This application is designed to improve mobility and safety for freeway travel. Using off-the-shelf commercial technologies uh, available on vehicles today. One of the earlier research projects we had in the Exploratory Advanced Research Program looked into cooperative adaptive cruise control and the benefits were actually very significant. We've looked into it in micro simulation and we can kind of project benefits, but really we're running these experiments to see are these benefits real. So the way the technology will, will function is individuals now set automatic cruise control. All right, we're ready. All right, we're ready. So they're going to set the speed or the distance that they want to travel behind the car in front of them. Those technologies are going to be connected so that the cars will be communicating to each other so they know when they're going to be speeding up, when the lead car is speeding up, or when that lead car is slowing down. And the car behind it won't have to wait until it sees that speeding up or slowing down. It will know it because the car in front is going to be communicating to it. The cooperative piece comes from not just the vehicle in front of you, but multiple vehicles in front of you and around you. So if one vehicle starts slowing down, all the vehicles in the platoon will at least be prepared to slow down, if not start slowing down already. What makes the development of this technology possible now is a combination of communication capabilities, high-speed, real-time communication. The ability to do data collection in a real-time environment and to process that data. So when he's hitting the brakes, watch it. Are we closing the gap on him? Uh, when he's brakes? Uh, not particularly. Okay. At least not, not in an immediately noticeable way. In, in each of the cars, we have a compute platform uh, that manages the entire system and also manages the, the throttle and brake. Um, we have a centralized positioning and timing system, so all the systems in the vehicle have the same position information and timing information. We, we have, in this case, the algorithm that actually controls this, the speed of the vehicle based on the, the factory radar system, um, as well as a specialized basic safety message, or BSM, that all the vehicles are broadcasting. So we're trying to make the investment now to understand and learn how these algorithms are going to work together so that we can share what we know with other industries in order to perfect the method in which these vehicles are actually going to operate on the highway. So what we do is we go out and we'll, we'll, we'll do a, a test run, we'll collect data from that test run, we'll also obviously monitor the gap between the two vehicles, you know, detect where the following vehicle is speeding up or slowing down too soon, make sure we're maintaining a correct gap to the, to the lead vehicle, and then we go back to the lab, it's a lot of test, review, update the code, test, review, update the code. That's kind of the cycle we're in right now. As roads become more expensive and as our, our highways become more congested, we have to start looking outside the box for alternative means using technologies that we have today to address the congestion and mobility issues of the future. And that's why we're involved in what's known as automation. Well, we think that the federal government has a role in doing the initial research in terms of the feasibility, uh, and looking at the different technologies that are needed to make this happen. And to work with standards making organizations in a way that will allow for this equal playing field. Uh, the technology is agnostic, but the standards are there such that people can compete with applications using the same technologies. Yes, yeah, so our research really isn't about necessarily bringing a specific product to market, it's about bringing the, the technology to market and sharing our results with everybody so we have a consistent system across manufacturers, across platforms. So we're looking at it from a feasibility standpoint. We are also working with the auto manufacturers so they're able to take the results from our research and development and then integrate that into their vehicle production. So case in point, um, traffic signal control. If I'm an OEM, I want to sell a car that's automated. If we in the federal government can show them the benefits of an eco approach and a glide through that traffic signal that works, all of a sudden we're helping to create a demand and the public is going to demand that of the private sector. Really what the federal government's main role, if you think about it, is to kind of spur the market and to make those initial investments in showing how this technology can make improvements, but also then providing guidance to the states on how we can deploy this nationally. So as the federal agency responsible for providing the states with a large amount of their construction money that they use to expand highways, we want to provide them research results and tools for them to have more effective investments of those federal dollars. What I hope for 
in the work that we do is the bringing together of different communities that can share their expertise in a way that the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts. We are creating the initial steps for the deployment of a revolution in the way we operate our transportation system.